From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this Cube Conversation. I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube. We're here in our Palo Alto studios in California for Cube Conversation with Shresh Menon, who's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Informatica of the Master Data Group. Shresh, great to see you. We couldn't see you in person. Three-time Cube alumni at Informatica World, industry executive. Uh, we're remote. Great to see you. Good to see you, John. Great to be back. Uh, wish this was, was in person, but uh, you know, I'll take this. This is fantastic. Well, one of the things that's clear in my interviews over the past four months, we've been doing our best to get the remote interviews. We've got a quarantine crew here. We're doing our part, telling the stories that matter. Data now more than ever, COVID-19 has shown that these, the companies that are prepared, that have done the work and for this digital transformation, you know, putting that cliche aside, is real. And the, the benefits are definitely there. And you're seeing things like reaction time, um, war rooms are being put together because business still needs to go on. This is like the reality. And so companies are seeing some exposure and some opportunities. And so a lot of things are going on. So I want to get your, your reaction to that because there are changes on how customers are evolving with data. You guys have been at the forefront of that, uh, pioneering you know, this horizontal data fabric, data 4.0 as Amit talks about. Um, what are you seeing from customers? How are they approaching this? Because you know, at the end of the day, they got to come out of the pandemic with a growth strategy. They got to solve the problems they got to do today and be in position. What are you seeing for changes? So, you know, um, you know, one of the most, uh, you know, important things that we started seeing, there are about, uh, you know, three big trends uh, that we began to see starting in about late March. Uh, and, uh, you know, share some of the, the data points that we, uh, that we saw across the world. Uh, you know, starting with Italy, which was, you know, in the news, uh, you know, earlier this year uh, with the uh, pandemic, uh, we saw that in one week, uh, the stats were that uh, online or digital sales increased by 81% in a single week. Uh, and it's obvious, you know, when you, when you lock down, uh, you know, a large population, uh, commerce moves to, uh, you know, away from the, the, the brick and mortar, uh, you know, kind of model to being completely, uh, you know, online and, and digital. The other part of it that we started seeing is, uh, you know, we had already started seeing a lot of our customers starting to struggle with supply chain issues. You know, as borders started, uh, you know, closing, opening, and then closing again, uh, you know, how do you maintain a resilient supply chain? Uh, and a resilient supply chain also means being able to be really agile in terms of trying to identify alternate supply sources, you know, be able to quickly onboard new suppliers, maybe in different parts of the world that are not so affected. Uh, and then finally, uh, the, you know, the, the, the last piece that, uh, that we saw were, uh, you know, every single uh, CFO, chief financial officer, uh, you know, people who ran finance organizations at all of these, uh, uh, you know, uh, companies, um, for them, it is almost as if you're driving down the highway uh, and you suddenly run, you know, enter this fog bank. The first, you know, uh, 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 reaction is to hit the brakes, of course, because you don't know what's... So every CFO around the world started saying, I need to be able to understand what my cash flow situation is. Where, where is it coming in from? Where is it going out of? How do I reconcile across geographies, lines of business? Because everybody realized that without an adequate cash reserve, you know, who knows how long this thing is going to, going to carry on. We need to be able to survive. And then the fourth element that you know, has always been important for, uh, for our customers is all about customer engagement uh, and you know, getting the best possible customer experience. That's just been turned up to you know, 11. Uh, you know, the, the, the volume, uh, because as organizations are saying, you know, uh, there's disruption happening now, there are new ways in which consumers are going out there and buying products and services, uh, and these things might stick. There's also an opportunity for some of these organizations to go out and enter into markets, gain market share that, uh, you know, they were not able to do in the past. And then how do you come out of this whenever it is, uh, you know, how do you come out of it? It's always by making sure you're retaining your customers and getting more of them. So. The underpinnings across all of this, whether it's supplier data, whether it's getting the most accurate product information delivered to your online channels, whether it is being able to understand your supply chain holistically, uh, you know, with a data platform under it. Uh, and then finally, customer experience depends on understanding everything end to end, uh, including everything you need to know about your customer. So data continue to 
you know, become top of mind uh, for all of these uh, organizations. Yeah, Suresh, we've had conversations with Global in the past three years, and I remember them vividly all about, and we've been really geeking out, but also getting very industry focused around, oh, the enablement of data and doing all these things, horizontally scalability, application enablement, AI, Claire, all these things are very relevant. But now with COVID-19, that, that future has been pulled to the present and it's accelerated so fast that everything's impacted. The business model, you mentioned supply chain and cash flow. The business is right there, visible, and all these things are exposed and it heightens the, the volume, as you said. And so everyone's seeing it happen. They can see the consequences, right? So if you, this is like the most reality, most reality view of all time. And, and any kind of is digital transformation, will it happen? So I want to get your thoughts on this because I've been riffing on this idea of the future of work, the word work, work places, work force, work loads and work flows, right? So they all have work in them, right? You know, we talk about workflows and you know, workloads, that's a, that's a cloud term and, and a tech term, but workplace is, is the physical place now home. Workforce are people, their emotional stability, their, um, their engagement. These things are all now exposed and all this new data is coming in. Now the executives have to make these decisions. This has really been a forcing function. So first, I'm sure you agree with all that, but what's your reaction to that? Because this bigs up challenges um, that customers are facing. What's your thoughts on, on this, this massive reality? Yeah, I mean, you know, for, 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 and this is where I think, you know, the, the other domain that, uh, you know, is very important, which is most important for, for organizations, if you have to be successful is really, you know, that employee or work for, workforce, the understanding. We talk about customer 360s, we have to talk about employee 360s, right? And tie that to locations, uh, you know, and there were very few enlightened organizations, I would say, uh, you know, maybe three, four, five years ago, uh, who had said, we really do need to understand uh, everything that, uh, you know, about employees, uh, where they work from, uh, you know, what are the different locations they go to, whether it's home and whether it's, you know, the multiple office locations that, uh, you know, the organization might have. And it started quite, uh, you know, realistically, in the healthcare organization. Uh, you know, there's a large uh, uh, healthcare provider here in California uh, who, you know, many, many years ago decided that they want to create an employee 360, uh, you know, and uh, considering it's doctors, it's nurses, it's, uh, you know, hospital technicians and so on, uh, who move from one hospital to another different, you know, outpatient clinics. And we are, you know, in a, uh, a disaster prone uh, state, uh, you know, and uh, what they said is, I need to build this data foundation about my employees to understand where and someone is at any given point in time and be able to trace them so that if there is, let's say an earthquake uh, in one part of the state, I want to know who's affected and more importantly, who's not affected, who can go out and help. Uh, and we started seeing that mindset now go across every single organization. Uh, you know, organizations that said, hey, I was not able to keep track when the lockdowns were, start were started, I was not able to keep track of which one of my uh, employees were in the air at that time, crossing borders, stuck in you know different parts of the world. Uh, so as much as we talk about product, uh, you know, customer, financial data, supplier data, employee data, uh, and an employee 360, and now with a lot of uh, state, you know, um, uh, state and local governments, uh, you know, creating citizen 360s has also now become top of mind because being able to pull all of this data together, and it's not just your traditional structured data. We're also talking about, uh, yeah, you know, uh, all the data that you're getting, the interaction data from your, you know, uh, folks carrying their phones, mobile devices, the swipes that people are doing in and out of uh, locations, being able to capture all of that, tie it all together. Again, we're talking about, you know, an explosion in volume, which I think is to your point, uh, you know, bringing in, uh, you know, uh, more automation with Claire, with uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning techniques uh, is really the only way to get ahead of this because it's not humanly possible to say, as your data scales, we need to get, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the same linearly, the same number of people. That's not, not going to happen. So technology, yeah. AI has to solve this problem. Well, I want to get to AI in a second. I have some on my list to, to ask you about, Claire, get the update there. But you mentioned 360 view of business and the employee angles are definitely relevant. Talk more about this, this 360 business uh, approach. Um, how are customers approaching it across the enterprise? Certainly now more than ever, it's critical. Right, so, you know, th the 360s have always been around, John, and I think, you know, we've had these conversations about uh, 360s now, you know, for the last few years now. Uh, and a lot of organizations have gone out and said, you know, create a 360 around a particular, uh, you know, uh, whichever one uh, in specific business critical domain uh, that they want to create a 360 out of. So typically for most organizations, you're buying, you know, parts, raw materials from a supplier. So create a supplier 360. Uh, you know, you really need to understand is there risk there in the supply chain? 
Am I allowed to do business with a lot of these suppliers? It's data that helps them create that 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 uh, you know supplier 360. The product is always important, whether you're manufacturing your own or if you're a retailer, uh, you know you're you're buying these from your from your suppliers and and then uh, you know selling them via your your different channels. And then finally, the third one was always customers. Uh, you know, without which none of those organizations would be in business. So customer 360 was always top of mind. Um, but uh, you know, uh, and, and there are ancillary domains. Uh, you know, whether it's the the you know the the employee 360 we just talked about, finance 360. Uh, you know, which are uh, of interest maybe to specific lines of business. These are all being done in silos. If you think about uh, you know um, uh, creating a full 360 uh, uh, profile of your suppliers, of your products, of your customers, the industry has been doing it now for a few years. But where the, the this pandemic has really taught a lot of organizations is. Now it's important to use that platform to start connect data, uh, you know, a, a, a line all the way from your customers, your, their experience, all the way back to your suppliers and all the different, uh, you know, functions and domains and 360s that it needs to touch. And the most, you know, I guess real world example a lot of us had to deal with uh, was the shortages in the uh, in the grocery stores, right? Uh, you know, and that ties all the way back to the supply chain. Uh, you know, and uh, you're not providing your best possible customer experience if, uh, you know, the, the goods and products and services that uh, customers want to buy from you are not available. That's when, uh, you know, organizations started realizing we need to start connecting the customer uh, profiles, their preferences to the products, our inventory, all the way back down to suppliers, uh, you know, and our, you know, for example, uh, can, we, uh, can we turn up the production in a particular factory, but maybe that location is under one of the most stringent uh, you know, lockdown conditions and we're not able to bring in uh, or increase capacity there. So how do you get a full 360 across your entire business, starting with customer all the way back to uh, to supplier? That is what, uh, you know, we are saying the end-to-end -end 360 view of a business or, you know, as we, uh, you know, those too many words, we just call it business 360. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, I've interviewing a lot of your customers lately and talking some of the, the, the situations around COVID. There's the pre-COVID, before COVID, during COVID, now looking after COVID. Some have been very happy and well prepared uh, because they've been using it, say, Informatica and have done the work and are taking advantage of those benefits. Um, I've talked to other practitioners who are struggling with um, trying to figure out how to architect because what your customers who have been successful have been telling me is that Look, we're in good shape right now because we did the work prior to COVID. And now they are being forced to have a 360 view, not because it's like a holistic corporate mission, it's they have to, right? They, you know, people are at home. So it's not like, hey, let's get a 360 view of the business and, and do an assessment and, and do better and enable things. No, 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 that's business pressure. So they're, they're enabled now, new types of data is coming in. So again, back to the cataloging, back to the, you know, some of the things that you guys have been working on. How do you talk to your customers now that they're in COVID for the ones that have been set up before COVID and the ones now that are coming to the table saying, okay, I need to now get quickly deployed with Informatica while I'm in during the state of COVID so I can have a growth strategy coming out of it so I don't make these mistakes again. What's your thoughts? Absolutely. And, you know, and I think, you know, the, the, uh, whether whether they've whether an organization has already a customer has already uh, you know laid the groundwork has the foundation you know before the, uh, the before COVID and the ones who have uh, who are now uh, you know moving full steam ahead because you know they're missing uh, capabilities in those functions the 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 conversation is in reality the same, more or less the same uh, you know because even for those who have the foundation uh, you know what they are starting to see is new forms of data coming in new forms of uh, new requirements being placed on the by the business on that infrastructure, the data infrastructure, uh, and being able to most importantly react very, very quickly. Uh, you know, and uh, and even for those who are starting off right now from scratch, uh, it's the same thing. It's, uh, you know, need to get up and running, need to get the answers to this, uh, to these questions, needs to get the, we need to get the problems to these solutions as soon as possible. And the, the theme, or, or the, I guess the talking points for both of those customers is really two things. One is you need agility. You need to be able to bring these solutions uh, you know, up to life and, and delivering as soon as possible, uh, you know, which means that, uh, you know, the, the capabilities, the, the, the solutions you need, whether it's, a ca you know, bringing the catalog, understanding where your data is, uh, you know, uh, very, very quickly, uh, your business critical information, how do you bring that in, all of that data in, integrate that data into uh, a 360 solution, be able to, you know, make sure it's of the highest quality, enrich it, 
uh, master it, uh, create those 360 profiles by joining it to all of this uh, in interaction transaction data. All that has to be done with the power of uh, technologies like Claire with, uh, with artificial intelligence uh, so that you are up and running in a matter of days or weeks as opposed to months and years because you don't have that time. And then the other one, which is quite important, is is cloud. Uh, you know, because all this capability needs infrastructure, you know, hardware to, to run on. And we've started seeing a lot of, uh, let's say, cloud hesitant or, you know, verticals, entire verticals now in the last two to three months, suddenly going from, uh, yeah, cloud is maybe somewhere down the road as far as our future is concerned, but to now saying, we understand that we have to go to a cloud when our technicians are not able to get access to our data centers to add new machinery in there to take care of the you know the, the new demands uh, you know that, that migration to cloud so it's it's that agility and cloud which really is uh, you know the common theme when we talk to uh, customers both yeah uh, you and know, now, and now more than ever they need it this is an important time um, and it's going to be an inflection point for sure there'll be winners and losers and people want to be on the right side of history here sure so I got to ask you about AI obviously Claire has been a big part of it. Now more than ever, if you have bad data, AI can be bad too. So understanding the relationship between data and AI is super important. This is going to be critical to help people move faster and deal with more data as, as they're dealing with now. What's your thoughts on the role AI will play? Oh, AI has a huge role to play. It's already begun to play a huge role in, uh, you know, in, our, in our solutions, whether you know, we start from catalog to integration to you know, the 360 solutions. Um, the first thing that AI can really do very, very well is, you know, we've gone from folks who said, you know, let's take, let's take supply chain. Uh, you know, there were maybe three sources of supplier data, uh, you know, that used to come into, you know, creating a supplier 360. Today, there are, you know, hundreds of sources. If you go all the way to the customer 360 end, we're talking about, you know, 1,300, 1,400 different sources of data with 90% of them sitting up in the cloud. Um, how is it humanly possible to bring all of that data together? First of all, find, understand where customer information is sitting across all of those different uh, places. Uh, you know, whether it's your clickstream data, call log data, uh, you know, whether it's the actual interaction data that uh, customers are having, uh, you know, with uh, in-store, online, collecting all of that information and from your traditional systems like CRM, ERP and billing and, and, and all of that. Bringing all that together, first of all, you know, understanding where it is, Catalog gives you that, you know, that, uh, you know, Google for the enterprise view, uh, right? It tells you where all this data is. But then once you've got that there, uh, it, it also tells you what its relative quality is, what needs to be done to it, how usable is it. To your point of if it's bad data, uh, uh, you know, uh, at least what, what AI can do, first of all, is tell you that these are, you know, uh, unreliable uh, attributes. These are ones that, you know, we feel can be enriched. And then, and this is where AI now moves to the next level which is to start, uh, you know, inferring what kind of rules, uh, you know, that are in our, let's say, repository uh, across integration, uh, quality and, and mastering uh, and bring, bring and matching, bring all that together and say, you know, here you as the, uh, as the developer who's been tasked with making this happen, you know, in a matter of days, we are going to infer for you what you need to do with this data. Uh, and then we will be able to go in and bring all these sources in, connect it, load it up into, uh, into a 360 solution and create those 360 profiles that everybody downstream, whether it's your uh, engagement systems and others. So it's really about that discovery, that uh, you know, uh, automation, as well as the ability to refine and suggest new rules in order to make your data better and better as you, know, you go along. I think that's really the power of Claire and, and AI. You know, I love the Google for the um, enterprise or data because the metaphor really is about find what you're looking for. It's a discovery piece, as you said, um, to make it easy. And Google did make it easy to find things, which is what their search engine did. But if you look at what Google did after that, they had to have large scales. SREs is what they call them. Site reliability engineers. One engineer for thousands and thousands of servers. That was revolutionizing IT and cloud. You guys are kind of thinking the same way. Data scale, right? So it's Google in terms of discovery. <laughs> Right. Find what you're looking for, catalog, you know, get it in, get it out, quest, make it available for applications. But you're kind of teasing out this other point with AI comes in, that's scale. Yes. That's super important, that's nuance, but it's key to the future. Absolutely, because you know, when we are, we are starting to talk about now, not just tens of millions of records, you know, when it comes to customer data or pro, you know, product experience data and so on, we're already talking about organizations like Dell, for example, uh, you know, with our customer 360, 
with billions uh, of, of records going in, uh, you know, which would be equivalent to the scale of, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, Google search engine business, you know, back, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, maybe 10, uh, 12 years ago. So yes, we are talking about within in the context of a single organization or a single single, uh, you know, company. We're already talking about volumes that were unthinkable, uh, you know, even five years ago. Uh, so being able to manage that scale, uh, you know, be able to have architectures, uh, you know, technologies uh, that are able to auto scale. Uh, you know, and the advantage, of course, is now, you know, we've got, uh, you know, a, a, an architecture platform that has microservices, uh, you know, as loads start increasing, be able to, uh, you know, spawn, uh, you know, new instances of those microservices, you know, uh, seamlessly. Again, this is another part where AI comes in. Yeah. AI being able to uh, say, you know, in, in the old days, it was somebody had to see that the CPUs were overloaded, you know, to about 100% uh, before someone realized that, you know, we have to go out and do something about it. In this new world, uh, you know, with AI managing, you know, the, the ops layer, uh, being able to look at, is this customer bringing in, you know, another in a cloud cloud world, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a SaaS, uh, uh, you know, world, bringing in a billion records that they, you know, want to, uh, you know, push through in the next, uh, you know, 10 minutes, um, be able to anticipate that, spawn the new uh, infrastructure and the, the, the microservices and be able to take care of that load and, you know, um, and then dial those back down, uh, you know, when the, when the work is done. Uh, this again, uh, you know, from an ops perspective as well, from, uh, so, you know, we, we are able to scale uh, instead of having, let's say, a thousand SREs, I think to your example, John, uh, you know, have only 10 uh, SREs to, you know, make sure that every, we look at the dashboard and make sure everything is going, going well. Well, you know, I've been covering you guys for a long time. You guys know that, and I'm a big fan. I've always have been uh, a fan of the, of the vision and playing out large scale data, large scale discovery, fast and easy integrating that into applications for business value. It's not just the data warehouse and just park something over here. This is a mindset, it's a foundational enablement model. You guys have done an amazing job. And now more than ever, it's, it's I think more understood because of the right. pandemic. Absolutely, and you know, and people are, 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 you know, making that direct connection between the business outcome and the value of having this, uh, this this data foundation that does uh, you know all the things we described. So it's great to see you and bummer we couldn't be in person, but hey, you know the pandemic hit, Informatica world went virtual, a lot of different events. I know you guys have a lot of things going on virtually, you're engaging well, everyone's working at home. Not not a problem, most of the techies can have a home working at home, it's not a big deal, um, but you got remote customers, you guys are engaging with them and congratulations and great to see you. Same here, thank you so much. All right, Suresh Menon, he's the Senior Vice President, General Manager of Master Data at Informatica. Uh, data is more important than ever, we're seeing it. This is a foundational thing. If it's not enabling value, then it's not going to be a good solution. This is the new criteria. This is where action matters. People who need data need to integrate into new workflows, new applications across workforces and new workplaces. This is the reality of the future. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching.